All right, let's talk uh, finger placement for joints and also work on some uh, orientation of the joints as well. So we've got a, a hand model. It's already off axis and um, it's typical of what you'd find on a, a character's mesh. Sometimes the thumbs are modeled a little further down, but often they're not. Um, the first thing you can do just to help your uh, visualize what what the model's doing is um, you, know, you can go ahead and just create a polygon plane to start with. I'm going to go ahead and snap it here and scale it up. So if we're trying to visualize how we're going to place the finger joints on this character, you can go ahead and do that by placing a, a visual visual um, connector and we'll do that with uh, this plane here so if you imagine what we're trying to do is we want this to be in the center of the, the, the finger And we want it to be on an angle that is correct. So that one looks good. Go ahead and do the next one. And again, this is to help us uh, visualize what the um, what's actually needed from our joint placement. And it doesn't have to be exact, but you, you do want to be thinking about these angles. Um, and you'll also notice when you look at the finger, depending on how it was modeled, the modeler might have been thinking of these planes as well, and oftentimes they're not, because here you can see that the, the finger mesh is aiming over here. If we go ahead and grow selection a few times, and we turn on soft select, Really, this finger should be aimed this direction and not aiming off to the side. So we're going to go ahead and grab that guy, grow selection, and just rotate it. doesn't have to be perfect, but we do want at least, um, you know, having the knuckle, knuckle should be on top, and it should have a plane that, that gives us a, um, you know, curve so that as the fingers fold in towards the palm, they're going to, they're going to narrow down and, and go towards this, um, towards the inside of the palm. When the hand opens, the fingers are going to spread out and they'll basically come up and open. So, you know, we can go ahead and keep, keep duplicating our plane over and use it to visualize what we're doing with our joints. I've got snap turned on, so... Let me just get my angles. Okay. And then that middle finger will, will collapse down. And then we'll snap this over. And go ahead and move it into position. So here you can see pretty much how your fingers are going to move. For the thumb, the thumb should end up looking like this. Remember that the thumb joint starts back up here in the hand and then comes down to the knuckle and then this end is really um, yeah we've got a knuckle here a knuckle here and then the other ones up in here where our fingers have them distributed starting at the end the thumb starts way back up in the hand um, 
and we want this plane to basically be aiming towards the hand. And really, like I said earlier, it should be uh, aiming over here at the pinky. If it's if it's modeled correctly, it would basically be on this this plane here. So if you think about where this this model has the same, uh, thumb position versus kind of where it should be, you can go ahead and alter this model's um, model's location. And I'm going to go ahead and. Um, insert and I'm going to go ahead and move the pivot point and I'll snap it back here at the back of the thumb and move it in and I'm going to click that little blue circle right here in the middle and that blue circle pins it so that when I go back to my rotate tool, it's going to stay there. Uh, except for it didn't because I forgot to hit it. <laughs> All right. There we go. So now I can rotate the mesh from back here. And basically get it aligned how I want. Which is a more natural bend and twist for the thumb. Okay, so now we've got our hand visualized and we can start placing bones. Um, now, you know, the what we talked about before, center of joint placement in 2014, you can turn on the snap projected center button and if we go ahead and click down through the thumb, start up here, come to this first knuckle, second knuckle, end. You can see that this gave us a basically a center of mass uh, rig. And you can certainly start off this way, um, but you have to fix the subsequent joints. So you, here you can see that the orient is bad. Um, it's kind of trying to align to its parent, but it's not doing a very good job. So, um, well, here we can zero this, zero that, zero this. And then we can try bending it back. Uh, but this is slow, so I would rather um, come back here. We're going to go ahead and zero the Z. I'm going to come down and zero my X again and zero the Z. And now you can see that the uh, we no longer have it aiming at the tip of the thumb. So then we can come back up here and we can go ahead and try to orient this the same way. And this is also kind of a pain to try to do. So this is where um, I showed you guys using an IK handle. go ahead and keep the tip of the thumb here and then you can simply use the twist to orient the thumb along the uh, along the correct bend axis and then we can go ahead and go to um, you could do a long rotation axis or uh, set to point. You could click over here and aim it back up here. So here you can see, and you know, basically we're getting the thumb to bend on the correct axis. So um, now if this uh, IK handle gets a keyframe on it, we can then go ahead and move our, our thumb around to adjust its location. 
scale it a little bit to uh, kind of tighten up the position or scale it out to get the, the um, thumb joints sitting higher inside the, the mesh. And then when we're done, we just delete the I key handle. We select this guy. I'm going to go ahead and select hierarchy and display our local rotation axes. So here you can see Z is out all the way down the bone, Y is up, and X is down. So I'm going to go ahead and modify freeze transformations and translate rotate scale. We leave orient off because turning this on basically free resets everything to world space. So if you watch this right right now, I hit apply, you can see that um, it resets the orients. But in a world space coordinate type system. So um, they now are facing they're basically worlds aligned. If we go to the front view and zoom in on that, here X and Y and Z are now zeroed, and all your orients are zeroed. So I'll go ahead and undo this. And we'll modify freeze transformations, turning off orient, and hit apply. So now if we check our joints, the scales are all reset. The top node has transformation values. The next joint down has a translation only in X. And our orient is clean. Okay, so that's one way to do this uh, for the thumb. And you can go ahead and do the same thing for the fingers, and then you can use the, the plane as your visualization guide. Hope that helps you out. Um, a couple other tips. The end joint always gets a zero orientation so that it aligns to its parent and that way when you select hierarchy and rotate it's going to curl the correct way. Um, now we talked about getting the setup correctly. How do you then switch these around so that let's say you want Y up uh, or you need a different orientation. If you try to do the orient joint setting here we know that this doesn't work when it's off angle. So this is where we go to either Comet Tools and he's got um, under Joint Hierarchy the Comet Joint Orient or if you've installed the CG Monks Tools you can go into Rigging TD Tools and under Joints launch the Comet tool from there. So let's take a look at this guy. Uh, it lets you show and hide axes directly in the system um, it lets you position, uh, you know, pick and aim and or reverse it. Um, and you can also have an auto guess the up direction so that the world isn't a, uh, isn't necessarily world. Um, and then you can manually tweak this. So, for example, if I know that all my orients are clean, but I just basically want to switch the Z and Y, um, we know X is the, the spin axis, so this is X, Y, Z. If I go ahead and do 90 in here and I hit plus, actually let me do um, select hierarchy so you can see what happens. Okay, so now Y is kind of sticking out of the hand. I'm going to hit plus, and you can see that I've just flipped all my orients 90 degrees. And if I go look at this guy, you can see that the joint orient has been rotated, but the top one still is the same. So if I hit plus, here you can see that the orient flipped again, or I can do negative, and it flips back. So that's one way to use the tool to reorient your joints so that, you know, for example, if you need uh, this to be positive rotation in, uh, you can do that. Now, of course, if you don't have this tool installed, you'd have to go through and um, basically unparent all of them, which what this tool does behind the scenes is it basically unparents, rotates them around, and then parents them back and freezes the rotation. So you'd have to do the same thing. We'd have to unparent these things. Um, we'd have to rotate them 
to basically, uh, if you turn on your rotation uh, and turn on discrete rotate, and you go to your rotate options, you can then adjust your step size for snapping. And uh, discrete rotate is, in human words, snap. Uh, and then once this is all rotated, you'd parent these back together. Oops. <laughs> if you can get them to parent correctly. This to this, this to this, and this to this, and then you would freeze their transformations. And now you've got them rotated. Uh, so it's much easier to do it this way <laughs> and, and manually rotate them out. Um, so I hope that helps clarify some of the control stuff and how you would orient these uh, joints, especially on the thumb that is out in world space. Uh, most of the time, you can just simply start in the top view and drag out. I'm holding shift key just to lock it to a straight axis and I can just drag out a joint chain and then I can go move it into position. And then again you can try rotating this and trying to get all this stuff to um, to work or you can just stick an IKEA handle on it. and position it that way. Now if you don't keyframe it, the cool thing is that the IK handle will uh, just follow along, so you can grab that guy and move him around. And still rotate stuff. So now, because I drew it straight, the key handle doesn't really understand um, how to bend the finger. So you can go through and just simply say, uh, set preferred angle. And now when I grab that key handle, oops, or not, <laughs> I can twist this 180. Well, each joint needs to have the uh, preferred axis set. Set preferred angle. Set preferred angle. There we go. Now it knows how to bend. Alright. And then you just do that for all the fingers and zero them out. And then you just go back and check that your joint orients are clean on the children. Um, and in this case, they're not because I've gone in and, and rotated half of them and the parent no longer is the same. Um, so just be aware that when you start messing with your, your, your other orients, um, you know, you can kind of mess things back up. So <laughs> and go back in and fix it with the comet tool or, um, you know, push the, you know, zero them back out. Um, and, and get it fixed that way. But make sure you, you're working on your planes and um, and that way when you go to when the animator goes to animate and they close their, their thumb down right there, you can see that the thumb is trying to match to a um, the pinky location, which is the natural touch point.